Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. We're going to finish up a couple of things about quantum angular momentum that uh, were left unfinished from last time before we go on to computing matrix representations with respect to the eigenvalue, eigenvector structure that we developed that's encompassed in this theorem. Okay, so in particular, we showed that uh, J plus acting on ket JM is an eigenvector of both J squared and J3, but we increase the, we cre increase M by one, J plus, and J minus J uh, acting on ket AM gives us another eigenvector of J3 and J squared, but we decrease the value of m by 1. Now, eigenvectors are not um, unique. Multiplying an eigenvector by a constant still gives us 1. So we want to develop a convention for this. There are many conventions that's going to be useful when we want to compute matrix elements. Now, that may sound a little bit mysterious, but Keep in mind these two expressions right here. And this is going to relate to the two expressions we derived earlier. These were the corollary, which essentially gave us the, um, well, it gave us a basic structure along with the, uh, the commutation relations, but If we plug in J minus and J plus, as with these constants C and C prime, and put it in this relation, this is what we, we get. Okay, so the left-hand side of each of this is just what I repeated to you in the previous page. And we set this equal to c squared, and that's equal to, we set this equal to the value of what we achieve for these bounds. So this gives us a possible value for choice of c. And this is what we're going to take. And so j plus acting on jm the ket on the right is ket j m plus 1. j minus acting on ket j m is the ket on the right. j m minus 1 multiplied by these real numbers. That's a convention, nothing more, for the raising and lowering operators. And you'll see that we actually need something like, like this later on when we do matrix representations. Okay. Whenever we do these uh, eigenvalue eigenvectors, we always have the possibility of degeneracies. That is, not enough eigenvalues or multiple eigenvectors for a single eigenvalue. We neglected that earlier, and you can see in a few places it's useful to go back and see where I actually used it. Uh, we assumed a one-to-one -one relation between eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Of course, we know for self-adjoint operators, we have a complete set of eigenvectors, even if we don't have enough eigenvalues. And so in this section, I actually prove that you that how you deal with degeneracies in this case. I'm not going to cover this in this course, but it's here just to make sure that you're aware that it arises. In, in rotational type motions, degeneracies do come up in certain important physical situations. But again, we want to, we're just learning the basics here. And it's my philosophy that we can always add on this um, more complex linear algebra on top of the basics that we already know. Okay, that is a good place to stop. And we'll come back next time for matrix representations. 
using the eigenvalue eigenvalue structure that we developed. Okay, bye everybody.